What's up, y'all? My name is Benjamin Abiola, and I am a first-generation British-born Nigerian. And today, we are going to be talking about code switching. I define code switching as basically the way one person alternates their language, their speech, their dialect, depending on the situation and the people that you're around. This was just a survival tactic for me growing up, so I didn't even know there was an official Oxford Webster Dictionary definition of code switching. I'm gonna be talking about how I code switch in my life personally, because I code switch every day. This is the code I use when I'm talking to my friends. Bruh, can you believe the fight that happened today at school? Bruh, that's what I'm saying. He jumped over the table, picked up the tray, bink, minked on his head. It's like, yo, this was crazy shit. Hold on one second, my mom's calling. Hello? Hello, mommy. Yes, no, I'm just hanging out with my friends. No, no, we're just talking about Bible study and everything that we're going to do. Yes, and here's the thing about African parents. When they get on the phone with you, they're gonna make sure they give you a prayer before they get off the phone. Amen, the Lord will bless you too. Okay, oh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> man, what y'all laughing at, man? I used to feel some type of way, I was like, let me go off to the corner and take this phone call and not be in front of everybody. But to the point where it was like, you know what? I don't care, this is the truth, this is my truth. And now we are in London, England, where I was born, where my sister still lives, and this is where I switch back to this code because I feel a lot more comfortable speaking to her with a British accent than I do with my American accent. She's also very apprehensive of it because she feels like I'm an Americanized person now. And I think that's just me wanting to stick to that code and still feel that sense of belonging to how I grew up. Let's give my sister a call. How about that? Yo. Hi. So I was thinking this morning, yeah, I was like, yeah, I haven't talked to my sister in a minute, so I might as well call her, yeah? How you feel? I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? Like, what's, what's the problem? I thought you sound like you're from Canada or maybe Australia. And here's the thing about my no, sister. Anytime I talk to her, she always laughs or she always points out the fact, like, why am I still speaking with this British coat? But the thing is, I'm still that. Your American accent is terrible, though. No, it's not. Yeah. All right, let me hear it. Like, I'm about to, like, meet up with one of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, y'all! And now we're in Texas. When I moved from England to Texas, it was a big adjustment. I would be in class and I'd be answering the questions, just trying to be a good student. Yeah, I might have the answer to that. Um, well, here's the thing, on page four, <laughs> what's, what's so funny? And I had my friends be like, Oi, Harry Potter! Oi, get us some tea and biscuits! Well, Harry Potter is actually a fictional character. <laughs> it's not real, I'm not, I'm not the real. No, I'm not the black Harry Potter. I Alohomora! Spelliomus! This is me winding curses on all of my friends who made fun of me in the seventh grade. Can y'all get some wizardry going on? I had to deal with that every day. So I started picking up the language of my friends that I did make and calling everything a hoe. From going from Harry Potter to, hey ho, what's up? If you meet a person from Texas and they call you a hoe, they're just giving you an overall encompassing definition of something that they may not feel like they should define. So if I say, yo, could you pass me that hoe? And I'm talking about my water cup, just Pass me my cup of water, please. And now we switch to the corporate code. Yeah. This is my professional sitting for professional settings. A lot of people like to refer it as speaking properly or talking white. I can talk to you like you're crazy, and I can also talk to you like you have some sense. When you switch to this code, you're in this code for a specific reason, and that is to solve the problem. Hi, Ms. Johnson. What brings you in today? Absolutely. Yeah, let me just pull up your account real quick. Oh, I see. Yeah, um, well, you have $200 in overdraft fees. I, I do not actually set the prices, no. You would like, to, uh, my manager's actually out at the moment. I can just handle this for you right here, right now. No need to yell, <laughs> no need to yell, I understand. Yes, Ms. Johnson, this is a one-time courtesy refund. Uh-huh, thank you, Ms. Johnson. Okay, all right, okay, goodbye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you switch in the corporate world. And it saves you from cussing out. Code switching in the workplace is an everyday occurrence. But sometimes there's those coworkers that you feel way more comfortable talking to than others. For example, my black coworkers. Bruh, did you see the reports Michelle left on my desk? Literally, racks on racks on racks. Just how do you expect me to have this done by the end of the day? Straight tripping. Hey, what's up, John? Yeah, I know I'm actually super swamped right now. Michelle just left a whole bunch of paperwork on my desk, piling up, literally. Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of out of line. Now, can you imagine if I would have said she was straight tripping to John, he probably would have went and told my manager and I probably would have got fired. So sometimes cold switching saves you a job. 
But a lot of times, shit actually gets real, and it's not all peaches and berries. And I walked into work, and there was an All Lives Matter sign waiting for me, greeting me, saying, hello, black man, tell me how you feel about this. And boy, was I livid. I logged into our emails, and I saw that someone else had put All Lives Matter back the blue as their signature that got sent out to everybody in the workplace. And my question is, the, well, damn, if I would've did this, that probably would've been a problem. So I go into the office, I talk to my black friend, bruh. Do you see the sh The disrespect. John, Black Lives Matter because black people are getting killed by the police at an alarming rate. It's actually disproportionate to the other races. Bruh, how does he not get that? That's what I'm saying. You didn't see him out there marching for Michael Brown. You didn't see him say Black Lives Matter in any of the emails. They didn't even come to us to ask if we was okay. John, the reason I'm upset is because no one here has ever said anything to appease the situation. Where's the empathy? All you all do is say all lives matter as if it's a pacifier to stop us from saying black lives matter. But here's the thing, if all lives truly matter, then black lives would too. You get where I'm coming from? How does he not get that, bruh? I'm about done in this job, man, straight up. So code switching saved me a job and saved somebody getting their ass whooped. Now, if you made it this far into the video, you're probably wondering who the hell is Ben really? Is he Nigerian? Is he British? Is he Harry Potter? Is he a hoe? Is he a professional? Is he a corporate American working banker? Who is he and what does he do? The answer is, I'm all of these things. That's right, one code doesn't define anybody. And in my personal experience, all of these codes have helped me be who I am today. I got a DM from a friend and she was like, you lie so good, I don't even know who you are. I just told her that I have different things in my life that allow me to identify with different moments. You are being true to yourself because that's something that you're doing to help other people either feel more comfortable or adapting to a specific situation. But here's a code switch PSA for all of my lovely Caucasians out there. If you have a black friend who you deem as well-spoken or not like the others or, oh, you're just, you're just so different. Well, he's probably or she's probably just code switching to make you feel comfortable. So again, mind your words and switch them up.